you're watching Rockin' and Rollin'. I'm Dan. I'm Jenna. And we're the Thompsons. And we have a... What do we have to show? Today we're talking about how to properly prep and paint an RV for long-term durabil durability. Dur durability. Durability. And durability. Hey, you're watching Rockin' and Rollin'. I don't know how to say that. Hey, you're watching Rockin' and Rollin'. Sorry. Boo Grace. <laughs> I'm Dan. I'm Jenna. And we're the Thompsons. And we are going to show you... Nope. I'm Dan. I'm Jenna. And we're the Thompsons. And... What Do you know? Say? And this is a, one of the... Uh, this is in our series of... Today we're going to show you something cool. Okay. Hey, you're watching Rockin' and Rollin'. I'm Dan. I'm Jenna. And we're the Thompsons. And today we're going to show you something cool. That's right. How to properly prep and paint an RV for long-term durability. Super exciting. Rockin' and Rollin'. Life your home so, real quick apology for you guys. In our last video on our motorhome renovation, we said the next video was going to be how much did it cost? But we actually got overwhelming questions from you guys that you actually wanted to see how to paint your RV first. It seems like it's kind of the most pressing topic right now. Also, we said we'd get it to you next week. Well, we had to make sure <laughs> that our RV was actually we long-term durability. We were just testing it. That's right. We are just testing it for yeah, you. We needed, about, see. we needed about seven months to test it. We've, yeah. been, we've been living and traveling full-time in this thing for seven months since we remodeled it. And it still looks, I would say about 95% so as good as the day that we finished the remodel. So. Yeah, I think paint was the scariest thing for me just because I've seen RVs that have been painted and it's chipped or worn. Yeah, you've seen it. You've seen all these amazing RV remodels on YouTube and then you see them in real life like a month later and all the paint is cracking and chipping and peeling. But the good news is if you use the right products and you do the right prep, you don't have to deal with that. And you have the right person helping you. That's right. <laughs> That's a big part of it. And full disclaimer, this is not sponsored by Sherwin-Williams. It it's going to look like it because of the products that we talk about and because Jenna's uncle who helped us with the project is like a major Sherwin-Williams fan. He's like all decked out in the clothes and stuff. So Starting off, what's the very most important thing? Very most. The very most very important most thing. The most important thing. Prep work. Prep work. That's right. Ask any painter. It doesn't matter if they're painting a car, a house, a guitar. It's 90% prep and 10% paint. So much prep. Everyone's really excited to dip a brush or a roller into a paint can and lather it on the walls. And that's a sure way to have the worst results ever. So when it comes to prepping for long-term durability on your paint, the biggest thing is you need the paint to just stick to the surface that you are painting it on. It seems like a no-brainer. <laughs> but it's really hard with RV surfaces because a lot of the surfaces aren't like typical of a normal home because right. it has to roll and flex. There's no like drywall and usually the lumber is like really cheap grade like particle board and MDF that just has like a paper veneer on it. Or which, wallpaper. Yeah or wallpaper and yeah. so these are all just super slick surfaces that paint does not like to, to stick to. To <laughs> stick to. <laughs> so what's the first thing that we did? Uh, well, clean the walls. Before we did that. Oh, we did before else. even cleaning yeah. the walls? We sanded everything. No, you clean and then sand, don't you? No, because then, you're left, then, with then, clean. <laughs> then you're left with sanding dust everywhere. It's been seven months. The very first thing that you need to do sand, is sand. Sand, sand, sand. Every sand, surface. Sand, sand, sand. Highly recommend <laughs> investing in an orbital sander if you don't have one. If you hate sanding as much as I do, it really makes quick work out of the process. Just slap on a 100 grit sanding disc and go to town. Touch every surface with that orbital. Just make sure that if you do have uh, surfaces that are covered with that paper veneer, you don't sand all the way through the paper. Yeah. If you sand all the way through the paper, then you're going to have to painstakingly sand all of the paper off. It's just enough to kind of scuff it up a little bit is really what we're looking for. We're just changing that super slick surface into something that grippy. is a little more grippy and, and porous. So, so sand walls, sand cabinets, yep. sand everything. We did not sand wallpaper. It sticks to the wallpaper just fine. Right. If you use a good primer, wallpaper shouldn't be an issue. If you have any doubts whatsoever, just hit it real quick with the orbital. So what's the next thing that we did? Clean the walls. That's right. Now, we used a product that most people wouldn't recommend for cleaning. And what was that product? Water. Water. Oh. That's right. <laughs> like, okay. was that a trick question? No, it wasn't a trick question, okay? There's lots of alcohol-based <laughs> dust removers and stuff that most people would recommend. But the reason why we used water, and you probably didn't even know this. I don't. But water actually raises the fibers in the wood. So it actually makes your surfaces even more porous and more grippy. Now, the problem with that is water will also raise the grain in your wood. So if you don't want to see the grain pattern in 
any new wood that you've put in your RV, then you don't want to do that step. You want to use TSP or one of the alcohol-based solvents for wiping away your sanding dust. But we used water because we just really wanted that extra adhesion. We did use a sponge. A sponge or just a damp rag. It was we a just pretty, dipped like... it in water and just a just a tiny amount. You know, we weren't throwing buckets of water. We just vacuumed up the dust and then wiped down every surface. So then what did we do? Do you remember? Well, I mean, we did a lot of taping off. And... Masking, <laughs> that's right. Good job. It's like a pop quiz. Yeah, you're going to be masking your entire life away. Can you remember what I said <laughs> earlier? 90% prep. 10% paint. Oh my okay. gosh, but a, a big tip, invest in a um, masking, masking machine. machine. Yep. <gasps> it's amazing. Yep. That's Make a product. Your life so that, easy. Yeah, that's a product that your uncle turned us on to. Totally. And, he was such yeah. a gift to us and giving us all these tips and pointers and helping us out. Huge blessing. Yeah. Showing us how to how to mask like a pro. Because I mean he is a he is a pro painter. So I mean that. he helped us mask one room and had it done yeah. like two seconds flat. We were like still masking. <laughs> yes. If you're going to be using a brush or a roller to apply your paint, you actually can get away with a lot less masking because you have a lot more control. Yeah. We opted to go with a sprayer and that's one, again, because your uncle was helping us yes. and he did a fantastic <laughs> job. And he had, has a just a boss airless sprayer. I've seen though the Harbor Freight paint sprayers get really good reviews and they're only like 50 or $60. So I would highly recommend spraying. You get just a much cleaner, more uniform look across yeah. your whole uh, RV. We actually moved back into our yes. motor home before we finished and so we couldn't run the sprayer to paint the cockpit so we did it all by hand yeah. with brushes and rollers and that was just not fun. So I highly recommend. Bad. No, it <laughs> doesn't look bad at all. But it's just so much more yeah. effective I mean, to use a sprayer. It probably took us three or four hours to paint the cockpit by hand. Yeah. Um, each three to four hours each coat and I think with the sprayer a section like that probably would have taken about 45 seconds each yeah. coat. Yeah. That, just to give you an idea of how much easier the sprayer is. So highly recommend that you just, just buy a sprayer and then sell it when you're done. Or if you have a friend or something you can borrow from, highly recommend the sprayer. Yes. When you do spray, tons more masking. So yeah. you'll see in the B-roll just all the masking that we did. So let's go ahead and talk about the products we use because like I said, you know, it's all about prep, but it's also all about using the right products if you want proper adhesion and long-term durability. So do you remember the products that we used? Uh, Sherwin-Williams. Extreme Bond Primer. That's right. Okay, again, we are not sponsored or endorsed by Sherwin Williams. I wish we could have been. It probably would have saved us a lot of money. But uh, you need a solid primer for that paint to stick and stay stuck. Yeah. Okay, when you guys see the, the chips and peeling happening from other people's RVs, it's because they didn't prep the surface well and they didn't use the right primer. And Extreme Bond Primer is the stickiest, grippiest primer you yeah. can get. It has worked really well. Now, unfortunately, we bought five gallons in the beginning. We expected to be able to buy another five gallons halfway through, and then COVID supply chain issues disrupted everything. And we actually Darn couldn't good. get any more Extreme Bond <laughs> primer. So the front half of the motorhome, really just the cockpit area, we finished with Zinzer Bullseye, which is probably the next best product. It's quite a bit cheaper if you're looking to save some money, mm -hmm. but definitely invest in some Extreme Bond primer for the surfaces that you're gonna touch and use the most. So like the kitchen cabinets, the kids' beds and shelves, yeah. uh, the bathroom countertops and areas like that. All right, so I am testing the durability of this Extreme Bond primer. So this is the back corner of our closet space where it's not gonna be noticeable if I scratch some off, but this is just the wallpaper that we painted over. We didn't do any surface prep to this other than just wipe it with a damp cloth before we sprayed it on. So I'm just gonna try to... All right, that is good news. I cannot scrape it off with my thumbnail. So let's try a different surface. Now this closet track up here was that smooth, like papery surface. We sanded it before we applied it. And so I'm gonna try up in here where it's not gonna be so noticeable. Yeah, that won't come off. Good. And primer on everything. Yeah. Anywhere that you are gonna paint, Primer goes first. Yep. So quick tips for application. Again, just to get the best adhesion possible, your first coat is actually going to be a dust coat. Okay, you're just gonna spray it on real thin, or if you're using a roller, just roll off the majority of the paint and just put on a really thin layer. You should still be able to see the color of the wood or the wallpaper through that first yep. coat. And that's what's called a tack coat. You let that dry, 
and then you can spray on your next coat nice and thick and that gives something for it to really bond to for whatever reason. I don't know the science behind it, but this is, <laughs> this is what Uncle Sam said and you do what Uncle Sam says. Let me yeah, tell you. Uncle Sam's been painting he's for a long time. years and years, so we were yeah. so thankful to have him. We're not tips. saying that he's old. <laughs> we're saying that he's experienced. No, he's, yes, he's got great advice yes. for painting. And so two coats of primer. So you got that first tack coat. You got your second full coat and that will also be your color block. So that will uh, get rid of all the, you know, wallpaper designs or whatever that you're covering up. And then you let that fully cure mm -hmm. before you paint over it. I think like overnight. Yeah, it was, it was the paint. Like six to eight longer. hours was a cure time or something like yeah. that. So after you're done putting on your primer, what's the next thing you do? Caulk. Caulk. That's right. <laughs> Caulk your seams and anywhere that you see gaps, because that's actually what happens when you put on your first coat of primer all the gaps show up you yeah all of your all of your cracks and gaps will be exposed and so mm -hmm. that's when you go in with your caulk now it's important because the rv flexes when you drive they use a specific type of caulk Very you don't want to use caulk. yeah you don't want to use a typical painter's caulk which is prone to cracking under movement and stress so we used extreme stretch mm -hmm. forget the brand but it's called extreme stretch and it's done really well for us in yeah. fact every seam that i've caulked did not come apart except for on the cabinets. And I'll explain why about that a little bit later when we talk about the durability issues that we have had, which are very minimal. But yes, so you're gonna fill all your gaps and all your cracks, and that's gonna give you a really nice uniform look when it's time to put on your color. And then once you're done caulking, what do we do? Paint. Paint, that's right. <laughs> and the paint that you use is very important. You can't cheap out on paint, especially with a, RV motorhome because because you need the flexibility in the you paint. need exactly <laughs> I'm so proud of you yes because these things flex and twist as you're rolling down the road and so you need something that's not going to crack or pull apart so easily yeah right? and I'm pretty actually I'm pretty sure Sher Sherwin Williams gave us the tip Yes. On this paint. And yep. she told us to use, what the heck was it called? Pro Classic. Pro Classic. Yes. And Pro Classic is actually a trim paint, correct? Yep. Yep. It's not actually a wall paint. And they were like, isn't that going to be overkill? And we're like, no, no. <laughs> not on something that's going to move. RV is in tight corners, quarters, so you know that like you're constantly bumping into, I mean, just sweeping, you're scraping the wall oh, with, the, gosh, with yeah. the broom and stuff. You know, they're just prone to getting bumped because it's, you know, it's tight living spaces. Yep. So the Pro Classic is awesome because it is a water-based paint. So very easy to work with, but it dries as hard and as durable as an oil base. Now the problem with oil-based paints is that when they dry, they dry really hard, but they're really brittle. Like homes that are stationary, the paint will eventually crack just because that's how brittle it is. So it's important to use a water-based latex paint so that it can flex and stretch a little bit. And so that's what's great about the Pro Classic is that it dries as hard as, and as durable as an oil base, but it is a water-based paint. It was pretty easy to work with too because I actually had to roll it on several things um, and it's just a beautiful paint in general. Just, yeah. it kind of, it look, you know, it, what is that, self-leveling? So it just- Yeah, that's right, I forgot um, about that. Smooths everything out and looks really beautiful and yeah. kind of flawless. Both the, the Extreme Bond and the Pro Classic are both self-leveling. So that's actually yeah. really great for getting that really smooth, like auto paint yeah. sheen it's type pretty. finishes. Yeah, it came out really good, especially using the sprayer. So really good stuff. The only thing about the Pro Classic is that it does take a full seven days to yeah. cure and reach its maximum hardness. And it's a little pricier because it is a trim yes. paint. So it's not meant for all over, but you know, you're doing yeah. a smaller amount yeah. when you're in an RV. Do you remember exactly how many gallons of paint we used? All together with the primer? No. I'll tell you, why don't I just say this? I'll tell you how much we, we spent on Spain. <laughs> we spent on paint. On paint. <laughs> so I'll just tell you how much we spent on paint. Altogether, we spent about two thousand. No, significantly less than that. Really? Yeah, it was about eleven $1 hundred dollars we spent, Dang. and about three hundred of that was the primer, mm -hmm. and about six hundred of that. Yeah, was that the paint. primer is also very pricey, but yep. worth every penny. <laughs> yeah, and we and we have a bigger RV. It's a forty foot motorhome, yeah. so it's not a small space, but. That just gives you an idea of how far a can of paint will go in an RV yeah. because it's not a home. So 
those are the steps that we followed and we've been living and traveling in this thing for is it seven months now since july july, july august september february eight eight months now eight months. and it's held up really well we haven't exactly been gentle on it i mean no. you, you can't when you live and travel in an <laughs> rv uh you're constantly moving around stuff for travel days and things and yep. it's just a tight space and we got a puppy Yes. <laughs> we did. is a bit rambunctious it runs around and crashes into everything and we've not had any chipping or peeling of our paint whatsoever no. so and the reason why i said earlier in the video it looks 95 percent as good as the day we finished uh we've just had a few spots where the paint is wearing out yeah. so the two areas that we get into the most frequent throughout the day um, our cubby for our trash can that I built and these drawers down here that hold our pots and pans and just about everything else because I put in two <laughs> large drawers in there. Yeah. You'll see where the paint has started to wear naturally. Yeah. And this is normal for any heavy use furniture that's been painted. So I have to say too, it's been extremely easy to wipe down in every area, in the bathroom, mm -hmm. in the kitchen. Cleans really um, it cleans up really, really easily. Um, and I'm not afraid to actually like scrub on it. Yeah, it, you can scrub on it. It's it nice comes right off and it's great. So it's been... The the grime comes right off, not the paint. You know, the, the paint the, stays there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the stuff that I'm trying to get off. Yeah, yeah, cleaning <laughs> it's not an issue at all. So you don't have to worry about that. So another issue that we had uh, is an issue that I thought that we might have and really hoped that we didn't. But it's one of the reasons why we use the Extreme Stretch Caulk is because we did this remodel in Oklahoma mm -hmm. and hung out in the Midwest uh, for quite a while after that. And yeah. it's really humid there. Yeah. And we knew that. And those <laughs> of you who are from there, you know that. It's like, duh. But we're from the Southwest where it's extremely dry. And so now that we've- Arizona. Yeah. So now that we've been back in the Southwest for the last like four months- During the driest part of the year. Yeah. The winter. All of our wood has shrunk, shrunk a little bit. <laughs> And we knew that would happen. It's one of the reasons why we wanted to remodel in the Midwest is so that we don't have to worry about building furniture and then going out where it's all gonna swell up and then you can't open yeah. your dresser <laughs> drawers and stuff. So you definitely want it, want it to go this way as opposed to the other way. But uh, the unfortunate thing is that the shrinkage was so much that the paint did crack in a few spots. And the only reason why I haven't touched it up yet is because I just wanna make sure it's done shrinking before I do it. <laughs> Otherwise I'm gonna constantly be touching it up because it was really tempting when it first started happening to be like, no, it was perfect, I have to fix it. Um, but it's happened a lot more since yeah. it started. Yeah. So we're just gonna let it finish its shrinking and then I'll go back and recalk all the seams and touch it up with a brush and it'll, it'll look good as new. Yep. Now, if there's anything that you think that we missed, let us know down in the comments. We will be happy to answer those questions. And also, I mean, we fast tracked this video to the front of the line in our remodel series because it was the one that you guys wanted to see. So why don't you let us know in the comments which video you want to see next and we'll get right on that for you guys within the next eight months. <laughs> huge, huge, big thank you to Uncle Sam yes. and Angela. Better hours listen. and hours yes. he spent helping us. Yes. After hours, after he was done with his, his other full-time job, he came and helped us with, with our project. Huge thank you also to Josh and Kira and Sunrise Ranch for letting us park our motorhome for yes. so many months while we did this whole project. So we yep. really appreciate you guys. And remember, until next time, Life rocks. when your home rolls. <laughs>